This is what they mean when they say self-image psychology. When you look into the mirror, what do you see? When you think about yourself, what comes to mind? Do you feel inferior, ashamed? Or there is that pride and dignity where you say that I have a contribution to make to mankind, positive contribution to make to mankind. So what happens now is we've got to learn about this concept. It's an interesting concept, self-image psychology. How do you see yourself? See, the way you see yourself is going to determine how other people are going to see you. And that is why many times the easier way of manipulating you and controlling you is selling you an image for yourself. They tell you that you must think so of yourself so that they can, from there on, you are easier to manipulate and you are easier to control. Do not belittle yourself. Do not think low of yourself. Do not have that inferiority in you. Where you see some people up here, but then when you think of yourself, you see yourself down here. And usually they say that the people who have, and the Quran refers to, that, to such kind of people as people with izzah. People who've got dignity. You know, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa says, إِنَّ الْمُلُوكَ إِذَا دَخَلُوا قَرْيَةً أَفْسَدُوهَا That when the kings arrive into a village or a locality, what do they do? They spread corruption. But in order to do so, there is another condition that has to go with it. And that is, وَجَعَلُوا أَعِزَّةَ أَهْلِهَا أَذِلَّةً But the people in that locality who've got izza who got dignity and pride, they must be debased because these are the people that are going to be problematic for us. And that is why when Allah speaks of Pharaoh, Fir'aun, Fir'aun was mentioned 73 times in the Quran, in 29 different chapters. What does he do? The first thing that he does is that he makes the people with izzah, with dignity and honor, he puts them down. Their souls must be crushed. Because the minute that you feel that I can say no, then you are dangerous. See, it is very important what we think of ourselves. Why is that? And listen to this one very carefully. We do not control what kind of thoughts come into our mind. But here is the thing. We may not be able to choose what kind of thoughts come into our mind, but we definitely make the choice of what kind of thoughts we want to dwell in. I may not be able to control it when it comes to me, but I have full control whether I continue with it or I do not. And here is the thing. They say, watch your thoughts. They become words. Watch your words. They become action. Watch your action. It becomes habit. Watch your habits. It becomes your character. Watch your character, that becomes your destiny. So now Islam tells you to begin with, watch out for your thoughts. As little as no sense we give it or no time we, we devote to it, but it is going, it is so powerful, it is so strong that it is going to determine your destiny. That is how strong your thoughts are. You know, whenever the oppressor wants to oppress, they make sure that the first thing that they do is that they dehumanize the person. Strip them away for this human dignity and integrity. And from there on, we go into exploiting and we go into killing and we go into the different things. And that is why they say, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Can I force you to feel inferior? Can I really do that? I cannot. I can talk, I can tell, but the minute you feel inferior, it was by choice. Because people cannot do that. People, have not, people do not have that much power over us. And that is why, my brothers and sisters, we cannot be ashamed of ourselves. We've got a contribution to make to humanity. And in order to make that contribution, you must see yourself as such. You know, in today's world, it is very interesting how people are told to feel about themselves. A lot in the West, it has to do with your physical appearance. If you look good, you are white, you feel good. 
and they emphasize good looks. And they say, feel, look better, feel better. And images are sold where women in the U.S., one of every four girls who are in the fourth grade have some sort of eating disorder, be it anorexia, be it bulimia, or whatever it is. Because TV told them they're too fat. You're overweight. You know, in order to be acceptable by us, you must be 120 pounds. Preferably, they have a figure 36, 24, 36. If you do not fit that figure, then you are not beautiful. And people work so hard. Women work so hard, so unbelievably hard, to fit the image that was given to them. And I ask, to begin with, who put that image as the standards? Who said 120 pounds are not good? In Africa, it's 220 pounds that are good. But I really have a problem with that. Who is setting the standards? And why are you falling into these standards? Why is someone else telling you how to feel about yourself? That is so much power to give to other people. So again, in Islam, we are supposed to have that good you know, feel about who we are. To begin with, you say, well, where do I get this feel from? Listen to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ And we have indeed honored all children of Adam, the sons of Adam, Muslims, non-Muslims, men, women, whoever it may be, said, all are honored in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to begin with, you are one of those who are honored by Allah. That's number one. You know, someone will say, that is really nice, but you know, so that means that all humans are like this. Well, it goes on. And the hadith goes on to tell us that another statement is that the Prophet ﷺ says that, you know, the son of Adam would seek getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until he has that very personal relationship with Allah. And it goes on to say that if Allah loves any of his servants, he calls upon the dwellers of heaven. O oh, dwellers of heaven, I love this servant of mine. O oh, dwellers of heaven, love this servant of mine. It is so deep that the Prophet ﷺ said, if you mention Allah, God Almighty, in an assembly, Allah will make a mention of you in a better assembly. Can you imagine this honor? Said, if you make a mention of Allah in an assembly, Allah will make a mention of you in a better assembly. Then he said, and if you make a mention of God in yourself, Allah will make a mention of you in himself. Do you see how deep that is? And that is why we say, if the way you feel about yourself comes from some other place other than your relationship with your Creator, you are in deep trouble. If the way you feel about yourself comes from other than your relationship with your Creator, you are in deep trouble. One time it was said that a man by the name of Hakim ibn Hizam, not a Muslim, really admired the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Came to him and he presented him with a gown. And they said that that gown belonged to Ziyaz and the mighty king of Yemen. Said the Prophet took my gift and put it on. He said, I have never seen someone more handsome, someone more beautiful than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in that gown. Then he said the next day, the next morning, as I was walking in the market of Medina, I saw Usama ibn Zayd, another man, one of the companions of the Prophet he said, I saw him wearing the same gown that last night I gave to the Prophet wasallam that one day belonged to Ziyazan, the mighty king of Yemen. So Hakim ibn Hizam looked at Usama. And when the scholars of Sira history describe Usama, they say, وَكَانَ أُسَامَةُ دَمِيمًا Usama was an ugly man, they say. Beautiful companion. But they say that physically, he was an ugly man. And they describe this by saying, he had very dark skin, he had very deep eyes, thick lips, and he had very flat nose. Now this is not to say, this is what makes someone beautiful or not beautiful. But this is how he was described. So he looked at him, and, and his father happened to be a former slave. So Hakim ibn Hizam looked at him and he said, Anta ya Usama? You Usama? You are wearing the gown that one day belonged to Ziyazan, the mighty king of Yemen. See, what is implied in that statement is, look, 
you're black, your father was a slave, Ziazin was a mighty king, and today you are wearing his gown. What does Usama say? You know, really sorry, I just happened to be there and the Prophet gave it to me. He looked at him and whose pride he said, Wallahi ana khayrun min Ziazin. By Allah, I am better than Ziazin. Wallahi inna abi khayrun min abi. And by Allah, my father is better than his father. Wallahi, by Allah, my mother is better than his mother. For I and my family confess, La ilaha illallah, but that king of yours never said, La ilaha illallah. And the idea is, where do you get pride from? What is your source of pride? You feel all good about yourself. You may be full of yourself. But the question is, where do I get that pride? And in Islam we say it comes from two things. Our relationship with Almighty Allah, and number two, our contribution to humanity. If you have a good relationship with Allah, it must be translated that you must be positively be contributing to humanity. So that we said, you know, people talk about pride. What is pride? Pride is when you see yourself as a holder of rights and has some contribution to make to humanity. So if you're proud of yourself, if you feel good about yourself, then we want to see some contribution to humanity.